Hey everybody, it's tippy.com, T-I-P-B. We are the iPhone blog and we want to give you a quick less than 10 minute walkthrough of everything that you need to know about the iPhone 4. If you've seen the hype but haven't really gone and tried to figure out what all this excitement is about, we're here to tell you that in a full little video. Um, so this is it. This is the iPhone 4. Uh, as you can see, it's very pretty new hardware. Um, and that's where a lot of the story is about the iPhone 4, is this fancy new hardware. Uh, They've made it quite a bit thinner than the iPhone 3GS, as uh, you can hopefully see here. Uh, they got rid of that curved back, and what they did instead is they made it uh, two flat pieces of chemically treated glass that are hardened and uh, just really, they feel really solid. Um, and so by sandwiching those two things together, they've made it very, very thin and they've been able to increase the size of the battery on the inside so the battery lasts longer. They put a new processor in it so it's a little bit faster um, and they also put this metal rim around and you can see there are these little black ridges around the edges of it and what that does is it separates the different kinds of antennas. This is actually the antenna for the phone um, and so every smartphone needs multiple antennas. It needs one for Wi-Fi, and for Bluetooth, and for the radio to talk to AT&T. And you've probably heard that there's some uh, drama right now where if you hold the phone in your left hand like this, your hand can make a connection between this antenna and this antenna and really degrade your signal strength. Um, I've seen it a little bit, but in practice the, uh, the overall signal is so much better than the iPhone 3G and 3GS that for me I'm actually dropping fewer calls and just things are generally working better. But it is an issue. You might want to consider getting a case for the phone when the, when the time comes just to uh, help mitigate that issue so your hand doesn't make that connection there. Uh, some of the other great new hardware features, um, actually the, the biggest one in my opinion is this new display. It's called the Retina display and that's because the pixels on it are, there's so many of them, they, they, they doubled the length and they doubled the width which means there's four times as many pixels which means that in practice it's really hard to even see uh, the pixels. You, it's just text looks really really good so if we open the web browser here uh, you can see that text just looks great even when it's really really small um, whereas before if the text was really small you could uh, you could barely see you know barely read it at all but now even with the text in a teeny teeny tiny uh, look you can uh, you can read it so for example if I jump into our uh, Amazon Kindle app here we'll load it up and you can see that you know the text here is very small but it's also very readable whereas normally on an iPhone I would need to have the text you know up at these sizes to be able to read it and not have it strain my eyes so the display is literally nothing short of incredible it's it's pretty amazing um, another new feature a 5 megapixel camera on the back with a flash takes really nice photos uh, they can be a little washed out but uh, you know compared to most camera phones just really impressed um, so we'll uh, load up the camera here. I'll just take a shot of the, uh, the iPhone box. It takes pictures very fast. You can turn the flash on, which is pretty neat. It also shoots high definition 720p video. And so you can see here, let's actually flip the camera around. Uh, you can see here, there it's got a front facing camera. And that's pretty cool. And one thing that this does that most uh, smartphones don't do is the flash works while you're using the video if you want to, which is not usually an option which is pretty slick. And this front facing camera, here I am, hey, this front facing camera is also neat because it allows you to do video calling. It's a feature that Apple calls FaceTime. It's exclusive to the iPhone 4. Um, you just call somebody else up that has an iPhone 4 and you hit the FaceTime button and boom, you're having a chat. So we, uh, we demoed that a little bit earlier on a previous video. So I'm gonna cut in a little bit of that just so you can see what FaceTime is like. So we're gonna connect. That was pretty easy, Marcus. Yeah, hey, Peter. How are you? Pretty good. So when you, did you, you didn't call me on my number, you just hit the FaceTime button on my contact, right? That's right. There's a little icon next to the, you know, send a text message, and it says FaceTime, I pushed that and it rang. Boom. And uh, I gotta say, you look not too bad, not too shabby. Well, the same for you. <laughs> the camera, uh, instead of your face. Well, yeah, I'll get my face in there, you can see it now. Oh. I've chatted with a few people um, that has the iPhone. They really like it. Uh, it would be really nice if there was a, a status indicator showing that you know someone was available uh, on a Wi-Fi network for our FaceTime for, chat. Yeah, that is a good point. 
uh, at this point it is not just kind of a, a crapshoot whether they'll answer or not. Right. So if, if you call someone that's not available on FaceTime, do you even like get a warning that it didn't work? Do they get a notification you tried to call them or just it just fails out? It just keeps calling. Uh, if you call them on, on FaceTime with a button, it just keeps calling. Obviously, if you call them uh, as a cell phone call, it'll connect, and then uh, after a while, the hold button disappears and becomes a FaceTime button if it, if it sees the other device. Right, right, okay. All right, well, hey, thanks for the call, Mark. Okay, so that's FaceTime. Now, a lot of the other new features that you're going to find on uh, iPhone 4 are actually not specific just to this new hardware. Uh, they come as a part of iOS 4, which is the operating system that runs on this iPhone. But it's also available as an upgrade for the iPhone 3GS for most of these features, the 3G, and even the 2G. So I just want to give you a quick look at some of these features because they are really convenient. Uh, the first one is uh, folders. So you can now put apps inside folders on your launcher so that you don't have to have pages and pages and pages of apps which is really convenient and it's really easy to do. You just take an icon and drag it on top of another icon and it creates a folder and then you can uh, go into the folder. You can even rename the folder. This one's called productivity. It's very simple. Uh, so that's a really convenient feature. Other thing about iOS 4 is this home button now has a different behavior. Uh, you can't customize it anymore but it's okay because the, the features are pretty simple. If you hold it down you can get to your voice control to let you speed dial people or whatever. Uh, and if you double tap it, it brings up this little menu down here of icons, and this is multitasking. Uh, iOS 4 allows multitasking, which is really convenient. This lets you run apps in the background. Now this isn't full multitasking like you have, say, on your desktop where you have lots and lots of apps just truly open all at once. This is multitasking where some apps are open in the background, other apps are able to save their state and freeze and switch quickly and so on. Um, so for example, Let's uh, open up a game here. This is a Real Racing. Real Racing has been updated to support multitasking. That's one of the things with multitasking is you have to wait for apps to be updated to support it. But that's happening really quickly. And as you can see, this uh, Real Racing game takes quite a long time to boot up because it's a pretty serious game, right? It's pretty heavy duty. Um, so, you know, let's say you're in this game, you're playing this game, and you get a text message, or you want to go check something on the web real quick. Um, you can just jump out of it and go do your next thing. So we'll hit, uh, hit the browser here, go read our web page, respond to our text message, and then we can jump right back into it. And there it is. It's still running, still doing its thing, which is pretty cool. And so it's, it's a lot more convenient. It's easier to switch between apps quickly. You can just double tap this guy, jump right to the app that you want to switch to, double tap it, jump to the next app, double tap it, jump to this. And if you want to quit an app, you know, you can hold it on your finger, quit the app. Um, another really nice feature of multitasking is it lets you play music in the background that's not from the iPod. So here's Pandora. We've got uh, some music playing here, playing some Wilco. And you can see, first time ever, and you hit the home button and music is still playing in the background, which is really nice. And you can hit double tap to go to this list and if you swipe to the left, you'll see that you can actually control this other music player from anywhere, which is really cool. It also works on the iPod, most music apps that get themselves to be aware of multitasking. So that is a quick overview of some of the new features in iOS 4, and also a quick overview of some of the new features on iPhone 4. Uh, you've got this great tough glass, you've got a beautiful display, you've got a better camera on the back that also shoots high definition video, you got a camera on the front that lets you have uh, video conversations over the web. You both need to be in Wi-Fi, but otherwise works great. Um, you've got folders. You've got multitasking. Um, you've got an overall faster phone. So there you go. That is iPhone 4 and iOS 4 in less than 10 minutes. If you want to find out more about either of these things or even the iPad, head over to TIPB.com. We have got pretty much comprehensive coverage of everything you could possibly want to know, from apps to new hardware to rumors to uh, great forums for getting help to learn how to use your new phone.